I think the diversity of the city, you know, both both in terms of its demographics, but but also just its you know just its vibe across you know across to it's just what I'm discovering. Yeah, you know, it just has so much to offer. These are events that are run by run by people, run with people to benefit people. If you understand who's involved um, and what they have uh, what they have to offer and what they want to achieve, it makes you know makes the the whole journey much easier because you're working in congruency uh, with one another. And when you start looking at where we are as a federation and bringing the Commonwealth closer together. Um, and some of the common ambitions that, uh, and ideals that we um, uphold, the city uh, and its ambitions just fit beautifully. And so we're just really delighted with, uh, with the decision and um, with who we're, we get to work with for the next four years. We're going to be approaching the, the organization of this event uh, different than any other event that we've, we've run in Commonwealth uh, sporting history. Um, by being a vested partner and working here on the ground embedded with the organizing committee. The fact that a number of the venues are already in situ, you know, is very compelling within the compressed time frames of, that we have. It was a very much a process of consultation, um, and we purposely created um, some agility. I mean, it was a nine-month journey that usually takes two years. The key uh, to running a major sporting event is to ensure that you know things that are uh, brought forward by the games are not necessarily just for the games. Uh, you know this notion of world class uh, but community relevant. You know, we like to borrow venues uh, to host our wonderful 11 days of competition, um, but it, we would be doing a disservice to communities and to citizens um, if we just simply worried about those 11 days of competition. These games provide a tremendous opportunity uh, because of the timing, because of the challenges that the, U the, the uh, you know, UK uh, may face with Brexit, but also some of the opportunities that may also open up. This is a fantastic uh, vehicle to address some of those challenges head on, but also uh, really take advantage of some of those opportunities. And I think it's, we are creating a, a, a safe place for some courageous conversation, but also some brave action. Um, and that's what the, I, th I really feel the, the, the Commonwealth um, affords us. But also its ambitions are, are more relevant today than ever before. And I think that this could uh, really be a value added to, uh, to the UK and its post-Brexit world. The Commonwealth Sport Federation's vision is to build peaceful, sustainable, and prosperous communities globally through our athletes, through the power of sport, and, and ultimately inspiring citizens, citizens to be more active and impactful. And I also like to think that the Commonwealth is well uh, positioned to be relevant outside of itself. It can be a global leader in tackling some of these uh, big relevant issues and uh, you know, be that trailblazing uh, group of nations that uh, you know, stands, stands for its people and, and, and the prosperity of their communities. We look forward to working with all the partners in Birmingham 2022 to deliver a great games and, a, and we have plenty of time. There's, there's inevitable disruption in, in hosting these events, you know, and I think what it is is making sure that people are aware of that disruption, that that disruption becomes, well, you know, w worth it um, in, the, in the end. This will be a fantastic, uh, you know, unveiling opportunity for Birmingham so we can accelerate, you know, uh, th th some of those projects and really showcase this to the world in uh, 2022. Um, you know, it'll, it'll really set uh, Birmingham up uh, beautifully in the eyes of the world, but also within the eyes of its uh, local community.